Yeah, so uh, Kurt and I have hit some ice on the trail. So we got some waterfall coming down, and we gotta like traverse this whole friggin' section, which is nothing but ice. Which is a great way to uh, sprain an ankle or break a leg. But fortunately, we lugged yak tracks up the mountain, so. So we're just gonna toss those on our boots, continue on our way. They should grip the ice, in theory, anyway. All right, show them how this, these yak tracks work, Kurt. I'm pretty much sticking to the ice, how about you? Slip. Yeah. Oh. So it was a pole that was slipping, huh? I'm thinking it was a pretty good deal putting these on before this treacherous stretch. What do you think? I hate to be like friggin' walking on these just in my boots. Side, friggin' no fun. I'm walking up hill with these on ice. And we, uh, we seem to have encountered some other trekkers. The only ones crazy enough to be up here in December, they gotta be from Australia or somewhere like that. <laughs> A bad day, Ray. It's right around this corner, right? Yeah, that's the landslide area. Oh, is it? Keep uh, camera running. Well, if we go down, we're going down together. One for all and all for one and all that. Try and leave the camera up the top. This whole uh, landslide area was supposed to actually be 10 to 15 meters apart and pace ourselves that way. That way if there's a landslide we don't both get taken out. The thing is, is I'm not about to go back to Tasha without Kurt, so we're uh, coming up on a yak train. Step aside here. Don't want to go by. I kind of used to giving us the upper side. I think. Yeah, oh, any bad.
But I made it to Thorn Fetty. And it appears to be deserted. That's <laughs> <coughs> uh, to friggin' bust my uh, yak track on the rocks. Oh, mine, are mine okay? Yeah, the gears are fine. I'll have to check it out. Maybe I can fix it. The design for rock for ice, not friggin' gravel. that turn back there and went over the border. <laughs> <laughs> We're now in Russia. I think the ball borders India and China. Uh, good thing you know your geography. Well, we've uh, made it to Thorinfetti. And you can hear the wind outside is tearing it up. I mean, it is just crazy out there, the wind. And the uh, innkeeper said it was worse yesterday. Yeah, he said it was worse yesterday. And they asked him what time he started, and he said, what, early in the morning? Early in the morning, something like that. Yeah, so a little, uh, a little disconcerting, since uh, that wind was just tossing us about on the trail back there. I mean, it was just horrendous. <clears throat> so, we're obviously going to want to beat this wind. And uh, the way to do that is we're going to probably get up, at, get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, have breakfast, and be on the trail at 4. And then uh, with any luck, we can be up on top of the summit by 6 or 7, heading down the other side before this nasty uh, wind kicks up. Hmm. Black tea. Tastes good. So we were going to try and do make the pass yesterday, but I got kind of sick and uh, took some Cipro and I'm feeling a little bit better, but still fatigued and the altitude I think is starting to take its toll on me. Kurt and I decided we're going to climb to high camp, which is the next camp up at another 500 meters. That way we'll have a shorter day tomorrow and today won't be a complete waste. But I may have to dig into the altitude sickness medicine here for too long. This is uh, just the start of our ascent. This uh, is a lot more hard than I thought it was going to be. I can barely breathe. I feel sick. So far we've come up from Thorong Fetty. I'm thinking the base camp's up around that ridge. So I don't know. Maybe we're getting close, but this is tough. How are you holding up there, Kurt? Feeling okay? Okay. Side camp. Still seems like about an hour away. <sighs> well, Kurt and I have made it to high camp. I've 
Uh, my sleeping bag trying to keep warm. The air is kind of thin up here, and I'm starting to exhibit some of the signs of uh, altitude sickness, including loss of appetite. I'm afraid if I go into the dining hall and smell any food, I'm going to puke my guts out. So I'm just laying here in bed. Kurt, I convinced Kurt to go on his own into the dining room and order himself some grub. That took some challenging. He wasn't too keen on that. And uh, I did ask him to bring me back a pot of tea, which he did. I think you can see it right there. But since I asked for a pot of tea, I didn't ask for any cups. He just brought me a freaking pot of tea. I don't have any way to drink it right now. And Kurt came back with the uh, teacup, so he's redeemed himself. I think it was a dirty teacup because it was like freaking sugar in the bottom and it's all wet and dripping. Let's screw it. I need something to drink. That right there is Anna Perner 3. And right over there is Talisio. And that's the peak that the uh, French expedition we went into is going to climb. And we have some uh, sundry peaks over here. Right, we're here on yet another day of our journey. Uh, last night was pretty miserable. Kurt got some bad food and uh, had it coming out both ends again. It was uh, probably the worst belt yet. I was feeling pretty sick the day before. I mean, I couldn't even eat anything. I had like nausea, loss of appetite. I think that might have been due to altitude, but Kurt's was due to, uh, I think, food poisoning or something. So I'm just going to give you a little tour of what it's like to be sick in the mountains. Because it's not like you can just run to the bathroom and uh, do your deal. At night, there's uh, winds gusting to 50 to 60 miles per hour. And uh, Kurt, that's the. He, he's not moving. He was like, he was in so much uh, pain earlier, I uh, went and borrowed some medication for some other trekkers. I found a little pill with a skull and crossbone on it, so I gave that to him, and he's been pretty quiet ever since. You still alive over there? Oh, sorry, I live oof. So let me show you what this trooper had to do in 50 mile an hour winds, sub freezing winds. He had to throw in his parker, get garbed up when you have the runs. And this is where he had to go. So he had to run all the way down here at night. And this toilet that's all covered with ice. That's where he had to go and squat. Do his stuff. Pretty nasty. I mean, it's such a calm, calm day to follow such a horrible night, you know? This is high camp. We are about 600 meters right now from one of the highest trekking passes in the world. And uh, you can see all the, little, all the little buildings here that you can stay in. And we're getting uh, pretty pretty close to the tops of peaks as you can see. I mean we're way the heck up here now. Thorough law is off in that direction. The air is uh, the air is very thin up here. I get winded just walking around. So we're going to hold up here one day, let Kurt recover. 
I have uh, secured a porter to carry his bag. Then we're going to send the final 600 meters to throw a long pass, and then we're going to descend uh, 2,000 meters to Muktanath, where they have have little hotels there with hot water and all the amenities, and we can kind of look at wounds and uh, and uh, recover. But Kurt's been real trooper.